We're oh, we're recording. We are now, yes. <laughs> oh, did we decide when we're going to meet? Um, just Mondays, but uh, we'll decide on a time. Yeah. We don't have to decide it today. We still have a little over two weeks. So. Yeah. Oh, when it, oh, is this year or next year? First Monday in January, you want to say Oh, that? okay. Yeah, let's shoot for that. Okay. Sounds like a winner. Cool. So, who's got scripture? Who's got prayer? Uh, 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 uh. Well, if I jump in here, I got the scripture already. <laughs> I, I got the scripture. I got it. Go, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> She's like, I call scripture. It's, it's Psalms 92. <laughs> and, and I'm going to read from the first verse to the fifth verse. 92? 92. Okay. And then and then I'm going to pick up from verse 12 to 15. So we're starting out Psalm 92, verse 1. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. Then verse 12, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, and they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. That was the reading of Psalm 92, verses 1 through 5, and then picking up verse 12 through 15. Wow, that's a good one. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. You. I like verse 14. Mm -hmm. Bearing that fruit in old age. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that is a good one. That that's very appropriate for our for for our fellowship. Uh, hey. <laughs> yes, it is. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. We used to have a oh we I mean we called her grandma even though even if she wasn't your grandma she was just one of those you called and. She'd always say, uh, you'd always ask her how she was, and she'd always say, not bad for an old tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's cute. Okay. Um, keep, if you could, well, not only my daughter and her boyfriend in prayer and me, um, but his mom, who um, deals with some different issues and they haven't spoken now for a couple of months and just kind of a contentious time for them and um, she deals with mental health and addiction and he, he's separated kind of from her just sort of you know mm. save himself help himself because it, it takes so much out of him and so mm. now they just haven't spoken and yeah, I know how that is that's that's hard on both parts mm -hmm. so it always seems to be worse around the holidays it's always oh, yeah yes that's true the holidays mm -hmm. does create a bit of holidays a make it hard mm -hmm. yeah I just need prayer for my family. My, I don't know if I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned last week, my great nephew has COVID and he is really um, right now, I think his sense of smell or taste was there, that was returning, mm -hmm. but they all, my niece and my sister and, and my, and my niece's two children, they all live together. And oh wow! My sister has some medical. She's the one who had the heart attack last year or two years ago. So I'm worried about her. And and um, 
but uh, she says she's staying away in the house and she still works, but they, you know, she can't work right now. So just keep them all in prayer. Just my family, they're in Louisiana. I was just gonna ask, is this your family in Louisiana? Yeah, my, my sister Sadie and, and her daughter and then the daughter's two children. Right. Oh, and keep my family in Costa Rica in your prayer too. I just recently started talking and communicating with them again and it's nice. Long road to healing, but um, at least it started, so. Mm. So many prayers. That, uh, mm. Yeah. They have to. So, Sister Mac White, you got a prayer request. Well, um, my mom is doing better, but you know, she's on that medication now. And um, I don't know how long she's going to have to stay on it, but um, it may be for a while. And it's not a cheap medication. It's, it's oh, kind wow. of pricey. Mm. So that's, that's going to be, um, that's going to be an issue there. But she's doing, you know, she's doing pretty good. I don't sense that she's getting, you know, um, getting too, how should I say it? She's not getting depressed or anything. Mm -hmm. She's still in good spirits. And she sees a couple of doctors tomorrow, just normal visits, you know. But uh, just keep her in prayer that, you know, God will still be blessing her, get through all of this while she's by herself and that she can remain healthy. Mm. Yeah. I know I, I have a relative that I found out recently also has uh, COVID-19 wow. while he was away at college. So, um, oh. you know, just want to keep, you know, him in prayer also. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really hard during this time, no matter what you do to try to stay safe. Yeah. It's everywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> And but, I don't know about this new shelter in place, but traffic is horrible. It seems like it's gotten worse. The stores are packed, like nobody's <laughs> staying home. Nobody's wearing their mask. I mean, not nobody, but there's yeah. so many that don't. And it's right. like, never gonna get rid of this. Yeah, you know, I mean, we got a ways to go to get to spring, you yeah. know, when we all can get, get the, the vaccine. So we still gotta do what we gotta oh, do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. people, well, people just, you know, they've made it such a political thing now. So it's just, oh. you know, now people just, oh, you're just taking away my rights and that, uh, you know, it's just so much. Good grief. Yeah. So it's oh, going to be a while to take it care. Is. It is. Oh, just... Sister Alicia, I meant to ask you how you um, asked prayer for two of your friends that what we're dealing with some uh, challenging medical news and, and stuff. How are they doing? I, you know, I don't know. I called and tried to, I left message with the person and they haven't gotten back to me yet. Okay. So, um, I just have to wait to hear from them, you know, so, yeah. Keep, uh, keep Sister Teresa in prayer. I know she's here when she can be, but I know she's also she said she's she's going through it, so let's keep her in in prayer definitely. Mm, yeah, I know it's hard, and I know when I talk to uh, Lenita, she really want you know she really wants to come on to the group and everything. And I told her about us trying to get together and just talk, and she says she really needs that, and she's looking forward to being able to be part of that. So. Good. Hopefully we, you know, we'll be able to do that. Well, let's go to prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, next time I'll be here early. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my scripture in front of me. <laughs> no one's gonna stop me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have my father. We come to you today and. We're just so thankful for, you know, you being able to be in our lives and be part of our life. Lord, we do want to be, you know, all of us are seasoned seniors. And uh, we just want to be able to do what you want us to do and be able to, you know, touch, 
touch people's lives. So Lord, we just ask you during this difficult time, show us how that we can inspire and encourage other people that are around us. You know, we come to you now with our problems. You know, each and every one of us and the problems that we have. We want to pray for, you know, Harriet and her great nephew and, you know, mm -hmm. their family, Lord, you know, that you touch their bodies and just heal them in any way that you can and keep them safe during these times of Heavenly Father. So we just come now and just asking you to just put your arms of protection around them. Let them know that you're with them and that you will protect them and that you will guide them through this difficult time. And we still want to pray for, you know, even though Sister Mac Watts, White Michelle's mother is doing better, you know, there's always the always these financial problems. Lord, just open the way to show show her that, you know, you will take care of it in that problem so that she doesn't have to worry about, you know, becoming financially broke because of the medication that she needs. Show yeah. us that how, as yeah. Christians, we may be able to support her and help her mm. through this difficult time. Just show us what we need to do. Our Heavenly Father, as we go through these trying times, yeah. and we want to look at Sister Maria and her family and, you know, her immediate family and her family that's in Costa Rica. Lord, you know what they're yeah. going through. You know what, what the needs are. So, uh, her um i forgot his name but what he's going through with his mother and so we just ask you, you know, just to touch the problems that she has and you know like it's so easy for us to become dependent upon you know things other than you our heavenly father so we just want you to take whatever that's holding her back from being able to see how you can come into her life and change her around. We just ask you to do that at this time, my Heavenly Father. We want to pray for our church family. And each one of them, we don't know what they're going through, Lord, but we know this is a difficult time, you know, and especially yeah. around the holidays when we have loved ones that we've lost and we just feel that there's nothing else that we can do. There's so many people that are just, you know, frustrated and you know, just angry. Lord, we don't know how to take care of that or get rid of it. You're the only one that can get rid of the anger and the hate that people are experiencing at this time. So Lord, we just come and we want people to recognize this is a time that we should be celebrating your birth and that, you know, understand that you are the reason for this season. I have found we want to keep this in our mind as we go through our problems that we're having at this time. So, Lord, all these things we ask in our son's name is for his sake we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let me share. Okay. Should be up there now. Yes. All right. So more important than freedom is the title of this lesson uh -huh. part of the book. This is Tuesday in our book. So um, it's a short part of scripture and a lot of questions. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to get through all of them tonight, but um, that's okay. We haven't had a, a, a parter in a while. The last two or three lessons we've gotten through in one night. So mm -hmm. we were on a roll there. All right. Uh, pray for insight, then read the section of scripture that will be our focus for the day. Colossians 4, 3 through 6. And I numbered them this time. <laughs> Colossians 4, 3 through 6. Mm -hmm. At the same time, pray for us too, that God may open a door for the message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may make it known as I should. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunities. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer everyone. And then let me bring this up. Oh, there's I I did type my answer, so 
Mm-hmm. For, <laughs> for what does Paul ask prayer for three through four? Why is this significant in light of the fact that he's jailed and far from home? If you were in jail far from home, what doors do you think you'd want opened? So three and four up there says, at the same time, pray for us too, that God may open a door for the message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Four says, pray that I may make it known as I should. So those are the things that he asked prayer for to open a door for the message and that he may make it the message known as he should. Um, And then why we think that is significant in light of the fact that he's jailed and far from home. And if we were in jail far from home, what doors do you think we'd want opened? The jail door. (laughs) I I knew it. I was waiting for it. (laughs) <laughs> it is so true you know, all the doors you know i have to admire paul because yeah he's you know he's thinking about okay you know i want to you know who can i send this message to i'm like how can i get out of here you know <laughs> and I'm, you know and i just said lord i want to be at that point where that's the first thing that comes to my mind is you know how can i witness to the people around me you know i'm like if i'm in jail i really <laughs> not think about witness. yeah that yeah. would not be my first thought i would love to say that i would do the same thing as paul but no no yeah. i would fail miserably <laughs> yeah i would too yeah <sighs> but yeah that's what i put i said he I said significant because of his situation, but more how he handles his situation. He was in prison for sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And despite his being in prison, that message still needed to reach people. He was not asking to be released from prison. He was asking for prayers to have God make a way for him to keep preaching the gospel, sharing Christ with others, and that his will be done through him. Mm -hmm. So... That was, that was what I put as far as significance, as far as what I would, what doors I would want opened. <laughs> I would do the jail door. <laughs> the jailhouse door. Open all yeah. those doors. And he was in prison, you know, a number of times, but the whole, every time he's in prison, his first thought was, you know, the people that were around him and what God, God's will. Uh-huh. And, and I just, I don't know. It's just like, Lord, that's not always the first thing that comes to my mind is yeah. your will. It's like, oh, and I'm in trouble, and it should be. I know it. it you know, really it's, a selfish, it's a selfish type of thing, you know? Like, right, right. I'm about me. <laughs> no, you're not alone there. Yeah. And for him, you know, he was, he, it's almost like making a way out of no way there. I mean, he's still going to be there in prison, right. but he wants to be sure that he can give the gospel to people. So that, right. I mean, I, I just think that that's so commendable and it's not mm-hmm. in our human nature to do that. Cause it's about us. You know, it's like, we want what we want and um, yeah. And we want, and we want it now. <laughs> so, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, yeah I, think, I think after a while, after we go through my, me, 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 my, you know, I would hope that, you know, I would then turn to God and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? Yeah. But I don't think necessarily that that may be the first thing I would think about. Yeah. yeah. Um, my comfort. <laughs> right. I guess when we're going through all kinds of situations that, of course, the good ones, it's easy to say, oh, thank you, Lord, and you're happy for it and everything. The ones that are challenging and more negative, I guess we say all the time that everything that happens to us has to come through God's hand. And so then you have, that. that is when you have to really force yourself to say, okay, I'm in it 
And Lord, you know about it. You know that I'm in it and you have allowed it to be for me to be in it. Mm -hmm. So what is it? You know, what, you know, what is it? Am I to show strength or to show, because everything is supposed to be for God's glory. So there Mm -hmm. has to be some reason that will glorify God in it, you know? So, um, that, that's something that has to come to our minds, but the flesh is definitely going to say, I don't like this and I don't want to be, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be doing this, you know? So no. Right. And let me out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. It's yeah. boy, something. Oh. Mm. That is so true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go on. But then again, while oh. you're going on, go we were knocked on our keister off a horse and got blind and then saw and some of those things we would say, hmm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I better. <laughs> yeah. so those are some pretty what dramatic. You stop your donkey. <laughs> so, yes. I guess he, God knew I'm gonna make this dramatic because you're gonna be doing what I need for you to do. So, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. No questions <laughs> asked. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So Paul previously mentioned the mystery of Christ. Do you remember from week two what the mystery was that he is making known? So Colossians 1, 26 through 27, 2, 2 through 3, and 4 and 3. So I actually went back and typed it on here so we wouldn't have to keep going through our book. Thank you. You're welcome. Good, good. So... I mean, I can read the scripture. So 1, 26 and 27 says, that is the mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. God wanted to make known to them glorious riches of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 2, 2 through 3. Mm-hmm. My goal is that their hearts, having been knit together in love, may be encouraged and that they may have all the riches that assurance brings in their understanding of the knowledge of the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Four and three. At the same time, pray for us too, that God may open a door for the message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So the question to all that was, do you remember what the mystery was that he is making known? And I remember, I think that was one week that pastor had come in and we, yeah, yeah, and it was, I think it was the Christ. That was the mystery himself. Yeah. Yeah. He came in that time because we were confused. (laughs) (laughs) Mystery by mystery. Right, in whom all in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and wisdom. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Because I think that was when they were talking about like the um, agnostics and all that stuff. That they believed that you had to be a certain. Uh, oh, I can't remember how they put it. Um, that not everybody could talk to God or something like that. Yeah. Yes. I, I kind of remember that. Yeah. That I was to do, a but... long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that was like pre-COVID that we... <laughs> yeah. While. That was when we were still going to Starbucks. Yeah. And then here, I mean, I, I think that was our transition, but... All right. Well, the... There, there is some, like the mystery, the general mystery is that it is Christ. And then you got some sub points in there. And that is that first Christ that was, you know, spoken of in the Old Testament now has come to dwell amongst, you know, amongst man. And then also after Christ that his spirit now can dwell 
within each of the with each believer you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's there's even more to the mystery uh that expands you know uh christ being with being with us yeah with them physically but but no more you know no more with them physically but now with each believer and that the gentiles can now join in with the jews as far as receiving you know the the promise and the covenant you know that we are we are one in that now so yeah. all of that is kind of like the whole thing coming together i think yeah, yeah. that's good yeah i agree i'm just kind of reading over what they think why they put i mean i see why they put the four and three in there but mm -hmm. that god may open the door for the message the mystery yeah so that it can be proclaimed so that mm -hmm. it can keep on going you know that more mm -hmm. and more the spread of it you know the gospel message spread it spreading out from them no matter mm -hmm. where, what situation, all the time we should be, you know, giving God the glory and thanking him in all things and, you know, still making sure that we're not only sharing the gospel, but, um, you know, not just talk about it, be about it. Is that what they say? Don't just talk mm -hmm. about it, be about it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, no matter where we are, that that's what people see when we're in, no matter what situation we're in. Right. Right. You know, and he's talking about change, you know, and you're in change, you can't go anywhere. And you look at us now, you know, we're kind of like that, you know, we're in change, mm -hmm. but uh -huh. you know, it's like, now we have to find out how can we reach other people, you know, even though we are stuck at home, you know. I'm doing it. Yeah. And it, yeah, you know, the church is doing it by having all these different, you know, uh, prayer groups and having, you know, diff so much is going on, on, you know, at church, even though we're not at church. Mm -hmm. It's really... I mean, if we keep in mind that, you know, God has us going through all of this for, you know, whatever his reason and will is, and we still need to be about his business his work. Yeah. Right. Be about that because he's got whatever's going on right you know mm -hmm. that's he's doing it for whatever reason it'll end when it ends when he decides it's time and so mm -hmm. you know we just have to it's it's never going to be to stop getting the good news out there and sharing Christ. It's, you know, mm -hmm. nothing's ever going to happen that is, you know, will be to stop that. So mm -hmm. if we keep that in mind, you know, okay, Lord, this is going on here, but make a way for me to still, you know, be able to. Um, that's right. You can, and yeah, that's, you know, that's so I true because if he's in chains, if, if, Paul is in chains and still trying to reach out. Mm -hmm. and we, we feel that we're in chains because we're, you know, here we are at home. There's nowhere to go pretty right. much. Mm -hmm. But we can't use that as an excuse not to reach out to, mm -hmm. to others um, and proclaim that mystery of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, if he can do it in chains, we can certainly do it here from. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And you know, and, and our Zoom account and our, you know, all the things, think right. of all the things mm -hmm. that we have, all the ways we have that we can connect. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, some people have done that very thing that once the, these COVID chains went on, they just kind of gave up, you know, and, and just kind of accepted that, you know, yeah. they anything but that's not true you know if, if you are willing and about sharing christ and doing you know doing his will god's will in your life he's gonna make a way for you but if you're you know bent on sitting there doing nothing and being stubborn he's gonna leave you there <laughs> you know 
I mean, yeah. you've got to, you can't, I always say you, you know, you can't ask, don't ask God to move mountains if you're not willing to pick up a shovel. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got to yeah. do your part too. You know, yeah. it's, it's not, yeah. it's not just, oh God, do that for me. Thanks. <laughs> you know, he's mm -hmm. like, oh, really? <laughs> if our kids did that to us, like, really? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's definitely a lot more gracious than we are. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. That's why I said, mine are lucky I have Jesus because this morning would have gone completely different if I didn't. <laughs> One of them would have been wearing that garbage disposal. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, and this will be answer. Um, it says, bearing in mind the teaching of mystery religions that abounded in Colossae, why do you think Paul keeps emphasizing the mystery? So again, I think, like I was saying, when they were talking about, let me bring this up a little bit, when they were talking about like the agnostics and all the different mm -hmm. um, religions that were going on, uh, mystery religions, mm -hmm. Why do you think Paul keeps emphasizing the mystery of Christ? Right. Maybe the mystery is Christ, not a religion. So, yeah. yeah. Right. That was so why do you think he keeps emphasizing? I think I would have just said, you know, like, since they were all kind of, um, you know, they were going towards all this mystery. It was almost like, you know, trying a little bit of everything to see which one they liked best in a way, like a religious buffet, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, that maybe mm -hmm. to get their attention, like to say, you know what I mean? Like maybe that's why he says mystery. I don't know. I'm just, mm. what are your thoughts? I don't know. That might be one I'll bring to pastor tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. And then you can bring it back to us next week. Or I you... will. I will. I'm going <laughs> to highlight it so I don't forget to ask him about it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. That was my thought. What about, do you, does anyone have any other thoughts about why he kept emphasizing mystery? I don't know necessary mystery. I, like you said, I think it's because there was so many other religions during that time. And he wanted to make sure that they understand that, you know, this is different. You know, what you're saying is this, this, and this, you know, because they had all these gods and stuff. Right. And he wanted to let them know, you know, like, this is the real thing. You know, like a mystery is something you don't, you know, really know or something like that. Mm -hmm. He's trying to tell them, you know, like this, this is who God is and letting him know. So I don't know. It's interesting. I have to go back and read up on Kalashi again. I think it could Everybody. also be the fact that they had some past history. You know, they had past, they have all of that information and stuff from the, mm -hmm. from the, the Old Testament time. He was thinking, I think he was trying to link it up for them to see it's not like this is just coming out of the blue. You, you look at look at all of what you have written and 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 was that was foretold and you know you got Isaiah talking about it and other you know and trying to say right. all these accounts you know link it up. This is what they're speaking about. It's just look at what Jesus is and how much that relates. So what you've been, you know, what your scribes have written. Right. I'm grabbing something. I hear you. Yeah. So that, that's what I think. That's why he's trying to get them. See, there's a connection. There's a connection. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think he keeps emphasizing that so they can see. It's not just something out of the blue, like these other religions that people just have been whipped up, you know. Yeah. This is something that's come from your whole history of being you know, Israelites, you know, and now it's right here set before you. Why can't you see it? It's not a mystery anymore. You know, 
here it is. So right, the mystery is Christ, right? Like the mystery Christ. is Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh. That's right. But still, get past it if I still talk to him. <laughs> 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 He'll bring it to him. Okay. Right. Still got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it says, well, and this was a little side note kind of underneath that question. I don't know if it went with that question, but it said only 0.1% of people come to Christ through mass evangelism. Mm -hmm. Most by wow. far hear about Christ and believe through the witness of someone who talks with them personally. Oh. Mm -hmm. Really? That's what the, the, that's what it said. I'm shocked because I think of Billy Graham and how much he has, you know, has a, uh, the effect he's had on wow. worldwide. And wow, 0.1%. That's it. Huh? <laughs> it's, yeah. Okay. Well, they might, you know, how many of those people are curious, kind of like the people in Colossae? You know, it's, it's easy to turn on a television. I mean, I've got family members and if they're watching sorry but I'll call you out <laughs> they you know oh yeah every Sunday I like to watch that uh Joyce Meyer or you know something on TV oh yeah we're watching what's his name the oh gosh that one uh Jake no white guy um I don't know. Oh. There's so many. It's so many of them. I know there's a lot. What's his name? Oh, it's, I know. I know so the he, one. You see yeah. the Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. always watching our Joel Osteen. But I know for a fact they're not saved. But you know, at least they're getting the word. They're getting so, you know, they've never mm -hmm. actually come to Christ, but they like turning that on and listening to it. And they consider that going to church and being mm -hmm. holy, you know, that they're doing their part on a Sunday. And so for me, it's like, you know, and they say it to me, like it's supposed to, like, I have got any pull for them. I don't, you know. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's good, but you know, have you guys ever thought about going to church? <laughs> you know, something, but yeah. you know, and for them, because I think a lot of it too, I think that, you know, it doesn't really shock me when I think about, you know, it's saying most by far hear about Christ and believe through the witness of someone who talks with them personally. Mm -hmm. I think fellowship is so important because mm -hmm there's something that makes you so inclusive with, with other people and that connection and believing the same thing. When you're watching a screen of someone giving them, and I'm not saying anything against mass evangelism because, you know, that's their way of getting the gospel word out. So, you know, it falls on whoever's ears it falls on and it's still the word. It's still a message. And so, but I think, um, you know, kind of like when you're learning a new language, you could, you can take a class and learn it, but there's nothing like going to that country and getting that, that experience and that education being there. Does that make sense? And so mm -hmm. I think that, you know, mass evangelism is something that people kind of can get lost in. And it's not that one-to-one -one connection with somebody. It's like, um, you know, well, if you know the person and you do. Ladies and we testify and then talk yeah. about the things that Christ has done for us. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's more personal if you know a person mm -hmm. and you talk to them right. than have a TV talk to them, you know, and just, you know, you can just get more intimate with them and talk about their needs and what's going on. So I can see where I'm just surprised it's so little. Right. Yeah. yeah. I am surprised at that. I, I know that we can make one person can make a difference, you know. Sure. And, um, but just that's very interesting. I know, right? Well, yeah. I mean, how many times is Joel Osteen or uh, Joyce Meyer or TD Jakes are going to pick up their phone or give you a call and see how you're doing? <laughs> know. You know, they're not. They can. Yeah. So well, I, I think that it's always good to say we need all levels of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, For sure. No, it's still the message. Yeah, it's still the gospel message. And right. I'm not speaking against it at all. 
And I, I think that they put that in there with showing you that low percentage because it wants to impress upon us the importance of, mm -hmm. of you know, just how important it doesn't matter. You know, many times we want to say, well, it's just me. I'm just one person. What can I do? And, and it's trying to say, no, every, it's, yeah. everybody's important. Mm -hmm. All the t and no matter whether it's a mass or just one down to one single person, it's all needed. It's all necessary. So don't count yourself short. Yeah. Right. Well, you can see that with Paul, how he was, you know, he was one person, but look how many people he influenced. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of who he was and, you know, him being so persistent in Christ, who Christ was, you know, he, he definitely made that, that difference because, you know, he was personalizing it. Yeah. And holding people accountable. You go back and you tell, go back to that slave owner. You know, say, oh no. <laughs> I'm getting the other direction, you know. <laughs> you knew what he was thinking. Right? <laughs> what that slave was thinking. No, no. <laughs> you want me you to know, back I like it. watching every once in a while. If I'm working on something, I'll have, you know, I'll go on and watch like daily devotions from uh not charles swindoll but the other one there's so many james, of them out there yeah james johnson no oh my goodness oh there's david jeremiah there's um there's so many <laughs> Crow, there's so many. charles stanley there's... there you go that's i think it's charles stanley yeah oh yeah they all have them so i'll just stick it on youtube and have it going in the background and i love you know there's so many other great messages joyce meyer sometimes she just cracks me up oh yeah the way she brings it and i think that's true is that they're so engaging because i don't want to say entertaining but they really they have that thing that that you just, you know, you want to keep listening or that they, it's their presentation, the way that they do share it is, is wonderful. I mean, that's a lot of why they're where they are right now, but, yeah. um, you know, I like it too, but as far as like, you know, what they're saying that only point one, and it is, that's a really surprisingly low number. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was just a little side thing on there and so, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot to be said for witnessing and, you know, talking with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, all right. So, even though Paul is in prison for spreading the gospel, what is his top priority? We kind of answered that. Yeah, we kind of did. I don't know why they, they asked that again, but yeah. we kind of talked that one. Hmm. Unless someone else had something to add to I know. That's what I thought. Maybe. <laughs> no, I think it's covered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, six. Who do you know or know about who's preaching the gospel and jailed for doing so? Pray for them that God might open doors for the gospel message to spread. I just said no one personally. I really, I don't. However, I know there's people in other countries that risk their right. lives by mm -hmm. Christianity and have to do so in hidden places. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're uh, you know, taking the chance of being killed, you know, and they're going mm -hmm. underground just to, you know, read the Bible and share yeah. Christ and all that. So. Right. You know, I know it's not jail, but um, yeah, but it, it's it happens in other places, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. It may be happening here, you know. We may, you know, like everything we say. Oh, it's over in that country, and you right? know, what we're going through now. It's like, wow, I never thought it would ha hit, you know, hit us here. I didn't either. You know now. You know, like we're saying there, we don't know when it's going to get to the point where we are going to go underground and with prayers and stuff. Because now they're talking about, you know, churches shouldn't have 
shouldn't be exempt because they're more political than, you know, anything else. And, you know, I see a lot of, you know, uh, churches starting, you know, are going to be attacked for different reasons and everything. Mm -hmm. I think too. Which about I like to discuss more when we have our private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but I think too about just the evil involved when the young man went into the Baptist church in South Carolina yeah. Yeah. And, and prayed yeah. with the people and then and shot them, you know. Right. What, you know, so even though it's okay for us to practice and to, to practice our Christianity, uh -huh. there are those who don't want us to do that and who have other, have motives, motives for whatever reason, you know. That's right. Is that because you would all, you know, I always, well, we all think of, of a church as a sanctuary and a safe right. place and that I can go. I remember saying to Jim one time, I want, you know, he had to, he was, he was leaving. And I said, I said, oh, I said, I'm fine. I'll stay here until I think I was waiting for a parent or something. And he was like, no, I'm not going to leave you here by yourself. Mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I was feeling that safety. Well, I'm, I'm here at church, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good, but no. So I think that's changed because, you know, just the feeling of safety where that would be just like being at a, a church or being at school, you know, mm -hmm. where we wouldn't need to lock doors and stuff like that. So the right. time is just, is just changing. That's a good point because mm -hmm. we're thinking of it in terms of, you know, our government or people may hear the message that we're saying about Jesus Christ and God, but it could be just because they just don't like you, you know, right. and that fear might be putting us to say, Ooh, we better, you know what I'm saying? We may have yeah. to overcome those fears of being afraid, not because people don't want to hear Jesus. It may be, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm of a different persuasion or I'm in a different, you know, different yeah. Uh, um, neighborhood or a different, you know what I'm saying? Right. Those fears can come on us to stop us from doing it. That sometimes isn't the message, but the fact of just maybe who we are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all of those things together. You're right. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true. Fear. Yeah, I remember, what was it? It was a few years back when I think it was either a mall or a school shooting and I can't remember but the guy went in and specifically asked are you a Christian yes I mm. think mm -hmm. was that at the was that at the one in Colorado in uh, not sure uh, I just remember hearing it and it yes. was it was a few years back. I was still at the martial arts school and I remember I remember hearing about it and we talked about it, you know, what to do in situations if you're somewhere and you find yourself in a situation like in a mall where there's all of a sudden shooting or, you know, what do you do? And we were talking about this one incident in particular and, you know, I mean, I would say the same and I would, you know, if my last words were standing up for Jesus and, and <laughs> claiming him and, and, you know, then that's the way he wants me to go. Then that's what happens, you know, but I'm not going to be caught being like Peter, like, Oh, I'm not with him. But, um, yeah, no, I, you know, you take a stand and that's, you stand up and you, Yes, I am. If that's if that's how I'm supposed to go, you know, it's unfortunate, but well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, I, look, I know. That's I would like to say no. I'm not. I would like to. You know, it's just like my family. Sometimes they would say because there were so many of the school shootings. Uh huh. They would say now. You know, if that happens to you, you need to run the other. And I was like, no, I'm the principal of the school. I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> so, no, no, I would be gone because I would try to save my kids. And, you know, I would. So like what you're saying, 
Bless I would, it's, it's probably not in my best interest, but I would probably run towards the danger. Oh. <laughs> you know, to try to save yeah. the yeah. kids, my teachers, uh, you know. It's like, no, I wouldn't run the other way. <laughs> but would I really? I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I look at, you remember when Abraham was going through um, the town and he declared that Sarah was his sister to the king so that she wouldn't, so he wouldn't get killed, you know. Now, he, this is a man who God truly loved. He had a relationship with God. The fear took over. You know, so we we never know what situation we're in where we're gonna be scared. You know, like, yeah, this is my sister. You know, and uh, <laughs> wow, yeah. So you know, we we tend to. You know, I would love to say yes, I am, and you know, but yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I just agree. Yes. Yeah. It's what you're going to be blessed to be able to do at that moment in that yes. moment. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Yes. That's very true. Yeah. We've yeah. got to realize we're human no matter what, you know. Right. Yeah. Still, right. We have that sin in us. <laughs> and so nature that, yes. that instinct, uh, survival instinct survival, that doesn't yeah. always kick in in a godly way. It just kicks yeah. in a humanly way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Oh, wait, are we stopping here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. okay. I'm just marking it so I don't forget. Good. Oh, I saw, I saw I start here. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought I was doing something wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. That was I, me. I was looking at my computer feeling like, what did I touch? I know. What did <laughs> I hit? That's right. What I do? <laughs> Well, that's a good and thing. And then you're trying to correct it from your stuff, but you have no control. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, I saw that pop up too. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. You are so right. Oh, my goodness. I know. I, I didn't know. even realize next week was Christmas. And I was talking to the kids. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's next week. I know. I haven't even taken the Christmas stuff out. I realized it today and I text Han and Mike. I said, if I bring the Christmas stuff inside, will you guys take care of it? Because I, <laughs> they're like, yeah, sure. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, yeah. It, it got here quicker than I had expected. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not going to be, you know, and I'm, I'm okay with that. It's not going to be our typical traditional, you know, right. new right. traditions are starting for everything this year. And so yeah. I'm looking forward to see how we're going to, you know, end up doing it. We're going to do like, we're each going to contribute a different food. I'm doing Costa Rican. Mike's making a nacho thing. Han's doing her thing. So that should yeah. be good. Yeah, it's be it's different. Different, you know, yep. new little, thankful, new thankful that we're here. Yeah, different. I know, different. I know. Yeah, so that's okay. Yeah. Hey, listen, in your closing prayer, I forgot we were talking about who, who can, you know, how's your mother? How's my? I had a flare up of arthritis that had me. I thought my ankles were broke. The oh, way. Oh, wow. So, um, I had to call in to the to the um clinic and stuff and and get remedied for it so just um it's it's working okay and i'm doing better but yeah just remember me in the closing mm -hmm. prayer because i forgot about the opening prayer that uh, my my ankles can get get better you have do you wear special shoes oh i've always wear kind of orthopedic looking shoes mm -hmm. i got to support you know i've yeah. got feet issues so I got to make sure I have good supportive shoes. And I do do that. Yeah. And I do put on an ankle brace sometimes too. Okay. So for whatever reason it flared up, it flared up worse than it's ever been. Mm. And I was in a bad way, but it's, it's, it's better. It's getting better. Painful. Yeah. Is it both, is it both ankles? No, the, the right one is the worst. Right. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh. Wow. I've got it from all those years in my hands, especially from all those years of martial arts and the weapons and stuff. And I, I, I feel the, the effects now that I'm not in it, it really crept up. And so once in a while, like my, the knuckles and the joints will just be like, I, yeah. like they're on fire. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I have the same. It's in my hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I can't grip something, you know, and it, yep. oh, it drives me nuts. I'm like, what is that? And I realize, you know what? I'm surprised it's not worse with all the stuff I put my body through yeah. in martial arts. Yeah. I'm surprised mm. it's not worse. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What do you use? Also, I'll just take some, uh, ibuprofen. What do you actually use to make that, to help it? Well, I, you know, I was going to ask Michelle, are, yeah. are you drinking enough water and, oh, drink and, more. Watch, and just watching what you eat? And I know that um, Maria is vegetarian, so I was going to say not much meat, you know, right. not to eat much meat and to drink water and just yeah. to, I don't know, but it's not a good feeling. And I usually don't take... Um, ibuprofen sometimes i well i just have this is just my little thing i have like a coconut oil sometimes maria that i rub i keep my hands kind of uh oiled moisturized you know, moisturized idea. yeah, yeah. Because i do, do that so i do yeah. that with my foot yeah. where i had the surgery on my right. uh, my foot yeah. because it gets really tight sometimes so i rub yeah. it down with uh olive oil and that yeah tends to relieve that area I don't know why, but it does feel better. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Also, yeah. I forgot to add, can you add, uh, Teresa, when we pray, I forgot to add her in our prayer. Okay. Yeah. Before, so in the closing prayer. Oh, uh, yeah. I got a whole page uh, now. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, pastor, too, and his family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You, know, you guys on Sunday, you guys be laughing. So I said, is there other people in that church? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, well, my, okay, so it's me, KP and I sit, we're like the closest to, he's on the complete other side of the pew as me. I'm right on that side by the computer and the camera and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Jim's in the way back at the media booth. And so we're all spaced out. And then when, when Lad is there, He'll kind of sit way like three or four pews behind us. Uh -huh. And um, so, yeah, there's usually the most that's in there is maybe four or five. Four or five, yeah. But it's usually just me, Jim, KP, and Pastor, but we're all spread out. Uh -huh. But yeah, you, you, you <laughs> hear probably KP and I the most because we're, we're yeah. closest to the closest. yeah closest to the microphone yeah. and the camera so yeah i could because i i'm like all right, i said are they the only ones there for real yeah <laughs> i know it does we make a lot of noise yeah. <laughs> every time we hear you cackling maria we i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do um, how, how is roy i don't know have not spoken to him have not seen him um, I'm sure Pastor and, and KP have talked to him, yeah, but they I don't know. Yeah. I think he's still working and doing his mm -hmm. thing. I yeah. believe he went to a Deacon Kemp service, so he's oh, still, okay. yeah, he's still, I think he, you know, watches the Facebook and all that, too. And right. I just haven't spoken to him. Yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering. Okay. All right. I'm going to, wow, we got a lot of, a lot of good prayer requests here. Okay. Very nice. All right. Gracious and heavenly father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for just waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day, another day that, that we have never seen before and another day to just rejoice and be glad in. And Lord, we just ask forgiveness of our sins, those that we know of and those that we don't. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we ask blessing upon all of us here wow. who are able to be here tonight. And all of the ladies that were not able to make it, Lord, and whatever their prayer requests may be, and their families and loved ones, we just lift that all up to you right now. And Lord, we have quite a few prayer requests here for Sister Michelle's mom to just keep lifting her up to you, Lord, and all that she's going through, and, and to just open a door and make a way for her as only you can, Lord. And Harriet's family in Louisiana, Alicia's family and friends and all of the all of the health issues and just things that they're dealing with especially through these times Lord and Lord just help us to be more like Paul remembering and keeping our focus on spreading the gospel and 
doing your will despite our situations, Lord, and remembering that you are the one that makes a way out of no way and that you, once you open a door, it stays open and, and there's no man can neither open a door that you close or close any door that you open, Lord. So we just help us to immediately call out to you in all things and seek your peace above all else because it takes us a while to remember that we are not in control. You are Lord. Yes. And so we just, we also pray for people in countries that, that are not free to share Christ and, and worship God or even read the Bible in there. Yes. You know, they, they risk death just to do so, Lord, in, in your name. And, and, you know, we just pray for them, Lord, to make a way and to just protect them. Put your hedge of protection and light around them, Lord, so they can continue to put their hope and trust in you. And, Lord, we just, we lift Sister Michelle up to you now with dealing with her arthritis and her ankles, Lord, and just... You are the great healer and, and whatever you need to do to just yes, thank touch, you. Her, touch her in a mighty way and, and her ankles, Lord, and bring her that relief that, that only yes. you can. Yes, yes. We lift up Sister Teresa, Lord, to you and, and all that she's going through right now with her and her family. And we know that she she does want to be here and misses it when she's not. But Lord, we just we pray for her and and you know we just ask that you wrap your mighty hedge of protection and light around her and her family as well yes. lord and yes. we lift up pastor and his family to you now lord and just you know keep them blessed and keep them safe and lord just you know protect him and and thank you for him for just always encouraging and empowering and and just you know keeping his focus on sharing the love of christ and, and the word and teaching and preaching and we're just so grateful and we realize that takes takes away from him his time with his family and you know he comes under attack quite a bit lord but you know he just continues to focus on you and walk the path that you have saved, slept, yeah. set before him lord and we're just yeah. so grateful for him lord and grateful for this ministry that you continue to bless and lord all these ways that you have opened doors and allowed us to be able to keep sharing the word and the gospel of Christ, despite the chains that we have in these modern times, you know, not like Paul had real chains, Lord, but just during this time that we have not given up and that hopefully we encourage someone else to do the same while they're going through all of this. So Lord, just blanket us in your peace and keep love at the forefront of our minds and let that be the guiding light in all we set out to do. We love you. We praise you. We honor and worship you in Jesus mighty name. We pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. Let me stop yeah. here, here. And all right. So we, I'm going to stop recording. So goodbye, everybody. I'm not all right. I'm just going to stop yeah. recording so we can talk about the thing, which, oh, baby. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Doggy. All right. Goodbye, everybody. And